Hi, Bob Grinier here, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. This is update two on Alan Goldwater's Mizuno analog experiment that he is conducting at his Magic Sound Lab in California. And where we left off last time was just uh, preparing everyone for the fact that it was going ahead. And uh, we had a challenge that we had no um, uh, deuterium gas. And there were some suggestions to buy either a lecture bottle, a small bottle of deuterium gas, uh, which has difficulty in securing, and also um, treating it in the correct way, um, as in uh, safety. And then also um, the huge expense of buying one litre of uh, uh, heavy water and using our lab uh, hydrogen isotope generator electrolyzer and reconditioning that that was going to be the very expensive option actually so the first bit of news is uh, and we'll expand on this uh, later is that alan was able to find some uh, lithium aluminium deuteride uh, that he purchased about seven years ago uh, which seemed to be pretty live and uh, so we'll talk about that in a minute anyhow uh, the first thing up is the preparation of the mesh and essentially he followed the document produced by um, Jed Rothwell uh, based off his interactions with Tadahako Mizuno and in the live document you can see Alan's version of this preparation and there are some videos of this uh, you can see on our YouTube site uh, but essentially he got this embroidery frame and uh, did the washing and the scrubbing and uh, the soaking and so forth and then he, he created this like Ted Peller uh, sort of support for the palladium which he had uh, I think he treated um, and then uh, rubbed it um, uh, on uh, this with a backing plate but anyway he's described it well and you can see on the scanning electron microscope that he's done here where there is a palladium uh, on the mesh and so he did this uh, um, and uh, that's the basis of the preparation and so forth and then uh, he did uh, two parts of a run and this is where you can see his novel uh, solution for getting around the um, supply of deuterium and this is the container of the stuff that he purchased many moons ago and he produced a little uh, steel vessel uh, with a I think it's swage lock uh, there uh, and put uh, 10 milligrams of lithium aluminium deuteride in there and then a filler to get rid of much of the, of the uh, trapped air and this was attached to the gas sampling part so this is where uh, this goes out to the uh, process gas analyzer and so that was taken off and uh, we had this uh, he placed this um, uh, ampule on the end here vacked out the excess air and then used a heat gun to uh, cause some decomposition of the lithium aluminium deuteride uh, in theory to produce the deuterium gas he ran an experiment this was also uh, broadcast um, and you will see on our Facebook and uh, Twitter um, that uh, the links to those are um, recorded on there but they're also in this live document if you want to go and review it but essentially it followed calibration really very closely across the whole range and so there was no excess heat but uh, as I say this is a first trial run and can a super uh, a contributor uh, looked at the entire data set and uh, you can see that there's nothing really abnormal going on with either neutron counts or guide counts and uh, this is the whole sort of uh, temperature in the cell uh, but anyway a uh, nice clear uh, data came out of this and when he analyzed the gases afterwards uh, this is the most interesting point that came out uh, is that the deuterium uh, wasn't pure it was not uh, mostly deuterium it seemed to be around about 50% uh, uh, deuterium gas in there so uh, it's not the best lithium aluminium deuteride and so this presents a little bit of a challenge uh, moving forward so the the method of uh, delivering deuterium is a good one it's actually the one that we suspect maybe Rossi might have been using uh, in in preference to actually mixing the lithium aluminium hydride with the nickel uh, it, 
uh, we believed for a long time that actually those two were separate uh, because the, the, the lithium t uh, and aluminium tends to coat the nickel and, and as Parkamov says that uh, causes the uh, reaction to probably not work. So the suspicion is that that was separate and effectively that's what Alan has done here by producing uh, this little ampule and uh, call, uh, allowing with a little bit of heat some deuterium to evolve but unfortunately it's not uh, uh, high concentrations of deuterium. Could this have been the reason why we did not see excess heat? Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, this does leave us with the requirement to find some other means of getting deuterium. And actually, you can get supplied deuterium. Uh, there's a company here. Uh, maybe you can't see it on there. I'll raise the camera. It's called Stream Chemicals Incorporated. And there's other suppliers. But here, the, you can get one gram of, of uh, 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 lithium aluminium deuteride for $248. Uh, I guess there's some shipping on there. So it'll probably be... Uh, and some uh, tax on there, so it'll probably be three hundred plus dollars. And if anyone uh, is uh, up for helping Alan, uh, if they could uh, uh, help us with getting this, um, we, we we need about uh, let's say around about three hundred dollars uh, to get to this one gram. But of course, uh, as you will see, uh, he only used uh, ten uh, milligrams, so um, it doesn't actually need a lot of gas. So uh, with the one gram, this will be able to provide uh, a lot of experimental uh, deuterium uh, if we were to purchase even this one gram. And this may actually be a good way for people to go um, uh, having this kind of ampule uh, uh, feed in uh, with, a, you know, just put a hot gun on that to uh, release a bit of deuterium. So. If anyone is willing to help us with getting uh, a gram of uh, lithium aluminium deuteride, that would be very much appreciated. Um, but as it was for the first run uh, of hopefully many runs, uh, there was no excess heat. So thank you very much for your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next update.